Hi there and welcome back to another NJS instructional video. In this video I'm going to give you my top 10 tips of what to look for when buying a second hand car. Tip number one, vehicle history. It's important that the vehicle has an up to date service logbook outlining the service completed and when it was completed. Manufacturers have established service schedules which are either time based, example every 12 months, or distance based, example every 15,000 kilometres. Inspect the service books and make sure a service hasn't been skipped or completed by a questionable mechanic or service centre. Note how old the vehicle is and how many kilometres it has completed and make sure it aligns with the service logbook. Additionally, do some online research about the vehicle make and model and ensure the vehicle is an all-round reliable vehicle. Otherwise, it may cost you more in spares and repairs as compared to buying new. Note down the VIN, that is the vehicle identification number and the registration details. Do a quick online check with your state's road authority and make sure the details all match up. If not, the vehicle may be stolen. Best to walk away and report this to the police immediately. Tip number two is check the bodywork. Now you may want to ask the owner if the vehicle has been in any accidents. If they are honest, they will tell you up front. If not, which is maybe why they're selling, here is what to look for. Check the gaps between the doors and panels all around the vehicle. Ensure they are even all around and on both sides of the vehicle. I once inspected a car, opened the bonnet and observed that the engine looked brand new, even though the car had high kilometres on it. I then checked the gaps between the bonnet and panels and observed on one side it was very tight and on the other side it was very large. This is a clear indicator that the car had been in a major accident and repaired, albeit not very well. Check along the body of the vehicle on both sides. Is there anything that stands out or is unusual? Any panels which look damaged or out of alignment? If so, the vehicle may have been in an accident. Additionally, check for any faded or damaged paint, stone chips, rust, either on the body panels or even underneath the vehicle. If you can, get down low and have a look underneath the vehicle. These things may indicate that the vehicle hasn't been well cared for and possibly neglected. Tip number three, interior check. Check the interior thoroughly. Sun visors, mirrors, steering wheel, upholstery, any water damage or coffee stains, carpet, is there any mismatch in colours, unusual wear and tear? All these things may paint a picture of neglect and carelessness. Check that all the interior lights work, all the seat belts work and so forth. Tip number four, engine and powertrain check. Check the vehicle's engine bay. Again, look for any rust, aftermarket products, any unusual items. Check the engine oil level via the dipstick. Is the level good and what is the colour of the oil? For petrol or gasoline engines, look for a goldish colour. If the colour is black, it most likely hasn't been changed for a while or may indicate neglect throughout its life. For diesel engines, check the level and make sure that this is okay. Diesels are a dirtier engine, and even after an oil change, the colour of the oil can go black really quickly. If possible, check the air filter and air box. Make sure no dust is present on the clean side of the air filter. Check the transmission fluid level and colour if possible. Check for any leaks, be it fuel, oil, coolant around the engine bay. Check the coolant level and the state of the radiator. Are there any leaks? Is there any cracking around the radiator? Also, start the engine and observe how quickly the engine starts. If the engine takes a long time to start, it may indicate problems with the engine. For example, compression, starter motor or fuel system. Listen out for any unusual sounds, especially when the engine is cold. If there are any rattles, ticks, knocks, bangs, it may indicate an engine which has had a hard life. If possible, check the differentials and transmission underneath the vehicle and look for any leaks. Tip number five, wheel and brake check. Check all the wheels of the vehicle, including the spare. Are all the wheels in good condition? Are the rims grazed or damaged? Are the tires in good condition? Is there plenty of tread left or are they bald? Are they worn evenly? Are they damaged or cracked? Also, if possible, check the brakes. 
Now, it may be difficult to inspect the brake pads on some vehicles, but see if you can get a good visual on the disc rotors. Check for any scoring, rust, heat stress, and so forth. Tip number six, roadworthy certificate. Is the owner selling the vehicle with a roadworthy certificate? If so, this is a good sign that the owner is confident that the vehicle is in overall good shape. If not, why not? It may indicate other issues the owner isn't willing to share. Note, a vehicle sold from a dealer as a driveway will already include a roadworthy certificate. Tip number seven, the suspension. As funny as it looks, bounce the car up and down both from the front and rear. The suspension should absorb the shocks and even out almost immediately. If the car keeps bouncing or takes a while to settle, it may indicate worn shocks or springs. Tip number eight, the odometer. Note the odometer or the mileage, it doesn't tell you the whole story. A car with low kilometers doesn't necessarily mean it will be better than one with high kilometers. For example, low kilometers may indicate short, infrequent use, where the engine turns on and off regularly, and the engine RPM is varying most of the time. An engine used like this isn't good and may have a shorter life as it never reaches its ideal operating temperature. Whereas a high kilometre car may indicate long highway use where the engine maintains a constant RPM and operates at its ideal temperature. In that case, I'd rather take the car with more kilometres. Tip number nine, check the exterior lights. Ensure that the parker lights come on front and rear Check that the low beam lights work, as well as the high beam lights. Check that all the indicator lights work, front, rear, and even from the side, as well as the hazard lights. And also check that the brake lights all come on. Tip number 10, test drive. If the previous nine inspections have all passed, then great. It's time to take the car for a test drive. If possible, try to drive the car in a variety of conditions and road surfaces. For example, on windy roads, check the vehicle's braking. Does the car take unusually long to stop? Is the brake pedal a bit unresponsive? Also check the steering. When you turn the wheel, does the vehicle immediately follow or is there a bit of a play and delay? Check the vehicle over a windy road, not just on a straight road. Also try to check the vehicle at highway speeds to make sure there are no unusual vibrations or sounds. I also recommend you test drive a few similar vehicles so it gives you an indication or a baseline of what to expect. If something doesn't feel or sound right, at least you will have a reference to see if it's normal for this vehicle or not. Also check the transmission. Try manually selecting the gears if possible and listen out for any unusual sounds. Does the transmission clunk when changing gears or during takeoff? These may be indicators of high wear and tear and the potential need for expensive repairs. Remember, no matter the price of the vehicle, at the end of the day, it's your hard-earned money that will be handed over. Therefore, make sure you do your research and thoroughly check the vehicle before you decide to purchase it or not. So I hope that these 10 tips help steer you in the right direction when it comes to purchasing a second-hand vehicle. I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell notification icon. Thanks for watching.